on my keyboard and mouse, I was like, oh damn, that's right. So, um, I quickly had to plug everything in into my home computer, uh, but I think everything should be fine. Let me know if there are any issues with the sound or anything else. It might have been that I missed to check that. Um, so, we continue in the saddlebag, the doctor's saddlebag. And last time we started doing the high poly modeling on it, like at least one part of it. Like refining that speed model, ropes, and everything. Um, so I guess uh, I'm just gonna check where I left off. There are a few things here that needs to be connected a bit more properly because I was in a rush. Um, yeah, right. I think uh, I was prepping it to be pulled over to ZBrush, but I wanted to do some last things before I did so. But now I can't remember what that was. <laughs> Good thing that I have a very bad mem memory when it comes to things like this. Well, hello, rats, and. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but Dr. For... Fi? No. <laughs> but hello, anyway. Uh, and hello, Abrax. Abrax, you migrated to your family home. Well, that's good. I guess you feel less isolated then, maybe? Like having people in the house? I am doing uh, pretty well. Uh, for, you know, being isolated. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well, like, physically and mentally. It's like, I mean, I miss everyone, so that's a bit sad. But otherwise, I'm doing really good. Nothing really to complain about. It's stylized for Dragonfly. Oh, oh, now it actually makes sense when I'm looking at it. That's a cool name. Hello, happy gamer. Three food. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's nice. Someone else cooking, perhaps. Don't have, pro don't have to provide your own food. Oh, you wanna go outside? Maybe, uh, maybe when all of this is over, everyone would be like appreciating the outdoors even more. Like, it was hard to get people to go outside and enjoy the weather. Everyone wanna stay in and, you know, play video games. Once this is over, everyone is gonna be sick of it and then be more... You're gonna see a rush on the street. Everyone is gonna be outdoors. Better hope they have toilet toilet paper happy here. <laughs> it's been, uh, I mean, in, in a sense, it's quite sad because uh, you know it's a way for people to feel better about the situation. But also, it's like people. It's a bit fun because I've seen uh, like people making toilet paper cakes and so on. That that is quite funny. Like the the, the outcome from it is funny, but not really that people are feeling that they need hoard and stuff. It will be parades for like weeks, alright? Man, I hope so. Just celebration. That's probably gonna be a while though. So I can't really see what it is, but it's like wrapping around this, um, what do we call it? I have no idea what that's called in English, actually. Um, it's a connection point for the leather rope, that's what I'm gonna call it.
Why the pure F scene is so perfectly spaced out? Oh, it's not really. Here we have a gap, and here. I think you can uh, align pictures or arrange them. So. I guess, uh, and then I like to do Control O, so it's like, you know, cutting away all the extra things by, you know, the things that you've done to move the canvas, I guess. Is it called buckle in English? It sounds, uh, sounds right, I guess? I don't know, I never really... Isn't buckle the... Maybe this thing is called a buckle. When I'm thinking buckle, I'm thinking about those like uh, cowboy, you know, emblem things that they have. They're like this big oval looking thing that they're holding when they're standing. But maybe it's just, you know, a decorated buckle. Oh, I'm actually just see your seat. Uh, well, I like to keep it uh, neat, uh, I guess. I can't stand it when um, when it's off. Like, when I'm doing mood board and, uh, you know, in general getting references, I like to keep like a neat canvas and add like words and so on. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm going for like a proper mood board and trying to figure out what I should make, then I do that. Oh, Raz, that's a buckle as well. It's just usually called a belt buckle. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I learned something new today. A uh, buckle. Let's see if I remember or if I just forgotten next time. Are your parents or us have a basement that's pretty much an apartment, bathroom, fridge, fireplace and bedroom? Oh, so you kind of like have your own apartment inside of your parents' house then? Hello Aslan! I am alive!
So I'm gonna start moving this one into position, I think. You can see that there's a little, like, I guess opening here for this one in the middle. I wonder if that would be easier in ZBrush if I just should cut this one open and be done with it. Hello Flat! How are you doing? I'm doing a... Uh, Okay, considering being uh, in quarantine. Thank you for the follow, uh, King at Tuno and Rapid. Many people popping in here. Welcome, welcome. Yes, this is why it's a little bit funky. I wonder if that's... Hmm. Should I flip it the other, other way around, maybe? Kind of like this. So it's like resting. Once this is over, Abrax, 
you spending four hours at the gym every day for like three months. <laughs> I wonder if that's actually gonna work. Uh, let me know if you if it works for you because then I will do the same. I'm trying to do some workout uh, every day. Well, not every day, but like a, the same amount I would do as if I would actually be at work uh, in the office. Then I would work out like four times a week during lunch. I'm trying to like, you know, pause, take a break and go into another room, like the living room. And just, yeah, do some workout, uh, like home versions of CrossFit. But I mean, the first week was pretty easy. The second week, I was still going strong, and now the third week, that was like last week, I started uh, slipping a little bit, I guess. Um, I only worked, worked out like once. I don't know, I started losing motivation. Uh, but today I did the workout. I don't know why like the third week was way worse, but somehow... Just was. Just ended up being way worse, I guess. trying to make eyelashes with your project. Oh, for your project? You're, oh, right. Cool, how's that going? You're doing like a high poly eyelash or going straight with low poly? When I will finish with the frogs? Well, I'm getting there. I have some issues with baking. My computer here is not really strong enough to do it with uh, GPU based like uh, substance or Marmoset, which means that I then have to go and do it in X normal because it's CPU. Uh, so then I can use the. Um, well, then I don't need to use the graphics card, um, which is nice. But then it takes forever instead. So if I do a test bake, I will have to wait for a long time before I can see what I, where I screwed up to then remake it again. So. Um, it's very slow. I bake this layer. Um, let's see, this is how far I am right now. So I did a bake on the rocks you can see in the background. Uh, I managed to do a test bake on the slates and on the pots, but they are actually there's actually some skews in here and stuff and some baking errors that was a bit unfortunate on my end. Um, so now you can't see it from here, but I uh, messed up <laughs> some some things for the baking. So there's actually hard edges going around because I messed up like with locking and unlocking the smoothing in uh, in Maya before exporting to X normal and stuff. So yeah, after waiting for that bake. Um, it turned out bad, and then you have to adjust it, and then you have to bake again, and then you go back and forth. So, um, as long as I have a really bad graphics card, it's gonna take a while. But this is the this is the the look. I actually bought it before I started the stream. Where um, uh, earlier, oh wait, what, what, today? No, yesterday. I was checking uh, how I could fix the issue, but then. I haven't been able to do a bake since I think I fixed the issue. Um, so I'm gonna turn on one after the stream today and let it be, you know, during the night because then it's finished in the morning. <laughs> so then hopefully I'll be able to see if it turned out good. Then we can continue again. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the reality. Slow, uh, slow computer and bad parts. I guess. Also, you can pay someone for that. 
well, set, send the send my mesh to someone and they can do the bake for me. Is that what you're saying? I mean, it works with X normal, and it's the same way you did it back, you know, a couple of years ago. Just, you know, two or three years ago. Still, like uh, X normal being the standard tool to bake, so you will always turn on a bake during night and then see in the morning if it was good or not and then you would usually have multiple acids you work in the same time so then before you go home again you fix it and then do another bake see if it's done in the morning <laughs> um, so yeah life, life with the baking uh, the old school way I would say ah oh, hello Denimir how are you doing? Eyelashes will be high poly. Okay, and then you will do. Are you just. Oh, I guess you're working on the high poly. Are you going to do some bakes of it later? Hello, Gnarly Potato. How are you doing? Aslan, let me do your bakes. <laughs> you just want to steal my models, Aslan. I know. I know you. You're gonna take them, and then you're gonna uh, say that you were the one who made them, right? And then you're gonna sell them, and then you're gonna move to Antarctica and uh, start a uh, penguin farm. I think I think that's your plan. Am I right? Oh, that that was your plan. Okay, good. Well, see, then I can send you this one because I don't wanna have you move to Antarctica and start like a penguin farm. I need you to still do uh, my birthday cakes every year. You solid, Denver? <laughs> you solid, thanks. Gnarly, you doing fine? You do going big boy quarantine in Moscow since tomorrow, you think? What does big boy quarantine mean? Oh, you will have to get permission to uh, go out, isn't it? This, I think that's... Isn't that the way in most places right now? I think. Aslan makes cakes? Yes, he do! He bake for almost everyone's birthday that I guess we have as common friends and make us fat. Like, he's always making at least two birthday cakes, and no one uh, can manage to eat it all, so... But they're good. They're delicious. Rats not in the US, you have freedom? <laughs> well, in other parts of the world, well then, they have, uh, like, restrictions to leave. For us, it's pretty much open still. But I'm asked to work from home, so I'm just gonna do what I'm told. Oh, this was harder to fit now. self-isolation mode. Now it became not that voluntary. Oh, oh, that sucks. Oh, I hope this is all over soon, so we all can go back to a uh, more normal life situation across the world. Uh, everyone is interested in uh, your cakes and the bakery skills now, Aslan. I think last time, uh, Aslan, when you... I remember there was 
most of the time you made a really heavy chocolate cake and then no wait DK didn't make his own uh, cake this time he was making something else but I think that was New Year if you have to post cake pictures now yes you do post cake pictures last night for some reason I'm hungry even though I ate like two hours ago Flatten this one out. Wait, I'm just gonna have to. Oh. Replace that one. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to move this one. It's a little bit flatter. Oh, I missed that uh, brush girl. See you, rise and shine. She. Oh wow, I'm I'm stumbling on the words. Try my gaming. I think. <laughs> I put the uh, Twitch show small like. <laughs> I have to squint when I'm reading. But thank you all for the follows. Nice to have you here.
Okay. regarding Fides Max or Maya is the prime way to the use but it feels like you guys already answered that so I'm, I'm gonna leave it to the chat to answer the question and then I'm gonna pet my cat if I worked on Battlefield 2 no I did not I was not part of uh, DICE back then I was working at another company I was working on Battlefield 5. What do you say, Kay? You feel like you don't have any room? Are you still to disturb the peace? Okay. Ah, he left and then he left like tons of fur Ugh, in the air. Ugh, it feels like I'm swallowing all the fur he's in. Cats move their tail in such a weird way. <laughs> that's what you take from the K being here. It's like, oh, that's a that's a weird tail. Uh, no, uh, I don't know why, but he's like always jumping up, and then he starts like you know moving the tail, and it's always like you know like a face slap, always in the face. You're like, really, really? I don't really want to have your tail in slapping my face. to get into game development without a degree in the industry if you have a technical knowledge. I mean it's possible, not everyone has like a university or vocational education degree. Um, I mean nowadays there's a lot of resources online. Um, you can just you know look at tutorials and other things. Depends on what you want to do though. Um, if it's art related it's a lot of practice and you know learning uh, which you don't really get in a like you do get the uh, tools in, in education but then you have to do a lot of hard work by yourself as well so Kay is just worried about Kim all she does is talk at the screen yeah my cat must be wondering what I'm doing is sitting here talking to myself, staring at the screen, and then moving the cursor. Like sometimes you see the cursor moving around, and then he starts slapping at the screen. I wonder if that's what you think I'm doing, You're staring at like a fly or something and trying to get it, but I'm just too slow. The dragonfly, your cat is doing that face up too when she's upset about something or hungry. Yeah, I think he's not hungry, definitely not. He has like three food, uh, like so he can choose whenever he wants to eat. But he's probably craving attention, like he's always craving attention. So, I mean, uh, I think he's doing that then because he's uh, unhappy with me not petting him right now.
that's the flower. That's the body. It should start to like assemble all of these. Like it's a mess here in my scene. This uh, flap here now that is barely visible, um, that should be more showing. So, should I move the flap? Then, oh yeah, they're intersecting exactly in one another. Yeah, this one should be. this How are you doing? Are you guys talking, talking about UX and UI design? I think in, um, in general there's a lot of companies looking for UI, UI and UX designer like I've seen a lot of open spots, so that thing, I think that's a very good um, like career move if you're interested in that. There's tons of good resources out there, and that is true. Then it's like YouTube. You have learning platforms uh, like Udemy, Pluralsight, ArtStation have their own tutorials. Like, there's so much that it's almost hard to find like the gems out there in a way, or like where you should start even. Like, a lot of the tutorials are really good. So then it's like you're choosing the ones to go with, so you don't get overwhelmed, I guess.
Oh, you're doing great, right? but you just want to chill a bit tonight, so you join? Well, we're trying to keep it chill here, <laughs> so glad you're joining. Bestie Art, hello, how are you doing? It. Like, I can't do two things at the same time, like talk and model. I noticed that, like, I'm so bad at it. I start a sentence and then, like, I don't finish it. Like, great. sound too nice. Did you cook something nice than all of the groceries you got? Uh, Bestie, are you doing a few researches about making environment? Do you have some YouTube channels to suggest that maybe explain workflow and how to approach them? You saw that there are different texturing techniques, for example. And you did character till now, so you would like to try something different, just curious. Um, well, there's definitely a lot of different ways to approach, like, environment. Uh, like environment creation, and it depends on, like, 
I guess what you're aiming for in the end, like which platform the game will be made for and how much memory and performance you have and so on. Like there is like an old technique that is still very valid that people use and it's like based on that you make your texture first and then you make your model out from your texture. So you have like a uh, like tiling textures, like train sheets people usually call them, but just only that and then you I guess add them in Maya and you start like extruding shapes from them and connecting them together. Um, that was very common to do before and it's still quite common, but more for basic objects and then like for props in general, as you populate the environment with that are more in the player's face, it's more uh, common now, at least for PC games and stuff, that you make them um, unique, like high poly, and then go and make them low poly and bake those um, and add more like a unique map for the props than before. So. I'm not sure if there's actually like a YouTube channel explaining stuff like this. Mm. Like explaining the different ways of creating like environment. Like usually people explain their methods and their way of doing it and like I would say learn f learn from someone that you like, like the environment they're making and then you can start experimenting with like different methods about you know, check out another artist like how they do it because it's gonna like vary a lot depending on the artist but then it's gonna vary a lot depending on the company as well it's not really just this is the only way and it's a straight way and then you know you get the same result so it's a bit uh, a bit tricky um, I'm not sure if anyone else here has a suggestion like this person explains this and all, um, like a YouTube channel or something, different techniques. Uh, but if you have an ArtStation account, there are, like, just click on environment there and people sometimes either have tutorials or, um, let's see. Like there are different like learning platforms, like 3D Motive also have a few tutorials. Uh, Triggs, uh, you host a podcast, all thing interesting, and would love to love the chance to have you on the talk the show to talk more about game development experience in the industry. Um, well, send me uh, send me more information. I guess at um, either Discord in a private message or on my mail. You can find my mail on my portfolio, like my website. Um, and we can talk about it and see if there is like time for that or not. I'm always interested in like uh, helping out whatever I can. If it fits my schedule, that is. Uh, good luck, Abarax. Take care. Uh, bestie are for someone in the beginning. Uh, I would suggest that make a small environment. Like, don't do a very big one immediately. Like, keep it diorama size. Um, and just do like. You can do tiling textures for diorama as well. It's just more like trying to finish something. Because uh, sometimes people go into environment art and they like, oh, I'm gonna make the environment after this concept and they never finish because it's overwhelming. Let's see if I can find... Uh... I have a Pinterest board with a lot of like diorama and different sizes. If you need inspiration. So then you have like those that just smaller props, those are like a room or like a small scene, like some props in a like a pile or yeah, just try to keep it simple to get the chance to explore. So then you can decide like okay, if you make a small little room, you will go and make tiling textures 
for the floor and the wall and then you would do unique individual ones for the, um, the props that you add and maybe you add a carpet, a chair or something and on the chair there's a book, you know, like just keep it very simple and then you decide if you want to try different techniques that you do that on those things in the scene rather than going large scale. And then once you're done with that, then you can move on to make something that is bigger. Otherwise you can start to get very overwhelming, I would say. Are you welcome? I'm sorry I can't give you, like, look at this tutorial, because I don't have that many tutorials laying around just like that that I am aware of, like, as I don't watch tutorials that much anymore. This should really be like a collective site for that, but then again, I think that's also quite hard. Because there's new ones popping up all the time. like a quarter of a rounded circle I think. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, shark shark head on it. <laughs> Aslan, have seven jobs, don't be a new one. <laughs> I wish I could clone myself. Really, for all the things I want to do, uh, or just invent more time. I'm still waiting for my future self to show up, um, you know, because I invented the, uh, like, time machine. Uh, and in that way I can clone myself or go into the future and stuff. But my future self have yet appeared, so I'm slightly disappointed that I haven't yet found a way to make this teleportation uh, device. Um, but then again, if I'm not smart enough, I just assume that um, I'm hijacking a uh, good time machine um, for someone else. So, I'm still waiting. Like, it can happen any minute, right? My future self should show up right now, and then a future copy of that. And maybe, like, because that person moved so far ahead in the future, they found a way to do a clone. And then those clones can come back. Sounds like a good plan, right? Oh, Denver, you were just playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> I think a lot of people are right now. I'm still not gonna play it, though. But, uh... It's uh, great that everyone else is enjoying it. It's the same issue with Steam. Oh, that's interesting, Raz. So you have to create a system for curating tutorials in it, and then you run into the issue of how do you determine if a tutorial is good or if it's still if it's still relevant. Yeah, I guess you would have to have people like working in the industry but not for too many years that will then be able to de determine like what's relevant I guess and that's a hard one because if you have worked too long I was I'm just gonna assume that um, 
like you're also still gonna be outdated and people fresh from school that have been working well, a bit more uh, but not too long they would be the best one to judge but then like how do you how do you do that people are gonna have like two jobs or yeah. hassle. I guess someone else will have to do it or my future clones or something. time machine but still had major imposter syndrome so she crowns K to the inventor of it oh so my cat is the inventor uh, well I will probably have given him the cred just because of the fun in it like writing that in the history books like the cat and then like in 500 years people will be confused because cats at that point are so smart that they have like outnumbered us anyway so it makes sense that a cat invented a time machine. <laughs> I think I'm also getting too into this last time. This is what happens when you don't speak to people for a very long time and you like you're going crazy in your own mind. Trying to like figure out a way of like you know world domination but in a fun way, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. Life. It looks sharper in the picture. It's gonna have to. Fly, you're in a disco server that collects the toilings for a beanie. Wouldn't be surprised if there are some environment art or 3D art in general too. Yeah, I think they probably are. The bad thing with like Discord servers is that it limits um, the uh, possibility for people to find it that are not like hanging out, like looking for Discord servers. It feels like a lot of communities move to Discord, and I think that you know Discord is a great platform. But it makes it harder for people to find it in general. <laughs> Your friend spent an entire night trying to come up with a similar system for Steam? Properly, but I guess I have to.
This is why certain things are faster in ZBrush. Just, you know. Just then you smudge them together and then you're done. But for some reason, I decided that I would do as much as possible in my app this time. Just to try something different. Uh, ten spin. If this is for work or for fun, how is it to work from home? Well, this is for uh, personal projects. Um, so I guess that's for fun. If personal projects are fun, sometimes I wanna pull my hair because it's not fun. But this one is actually pretty fun to work with. This is a uh, Dr. Saddlebag for a art jam that we are hosting right now in Discord, our Discord server. So uh, it's one of the props that you can uh, do for the challenge. So I chose to go with the Oh, saddlebag. Um, so it's um, purely for fun. I can't stream what I'm working on, like for work, because that, you know, my company wouldn't allow it. Um, and it's like <laughs> secret anyway, like with every other game company. Um, so all my streams are always just personal projects. But working from home in general, like I do work from home. I have another work set up behind me, um, like the machine that I have from uh, like my work place or like the office. Uh, so that is the one I like work on during the day, and then I sit at my own computer uh, if I do modeling for fun. So if I'm allowed to work on personal pro personal projects, yeah, of course I am. Like, as long as I don't sell my projects or like, you know, give someone the models, I would then be allowed to. Uh, so, you're allowed to do, like, your hobby. Uh, it's just that you're not allowed to do freelance. When it comes to 3D art, how many of you try to be accurate as possible with birds, poly, etc.? Is it po important to be accurate or can you roughly line up parts of the model? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I don't know. I'm a little bit uncertain what you're asking for when it comes to like 
this that I made, like if I follow the blueprint in the background and like aligning it exactly to like the picture, then no, I am free, free modeling, I guess. So I have the picture on the side on my second monitor here and then I just model what I see and uh, like you always have to start I guess with like a block out. So it always starts for me like with uh, boxes. See if I did I save a picture? Yeah, so here you have a more boxy variant. Like this is like a box with a hole in it. Uh, and then I reshaped it and reshaped it again. So that's how you usually start to get the scale of things. Uh, and then you can continue modeling once you have the scale. So this one I've been adjusting a lot back and forth to get the scale to fit, like scaling up and down. This like had a too long bar game, so I'm just like, I guess using my eyes, eye it. In Swedish we say like, you do like, uh, do you measuring with your eyes. <laughs> uh, not sure if, Swed if it's Swedish American, but yeah, you know. You're allowed to do your hobby as long as you don't yeah, work for someone else, which is like freelance basically. That's, you know, working for money, so... Uh, uh, tricks to clarify are the heights and widths of the model rounded to whole numbers are the free model roughly, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, okay, now I don't use whole numbers. I uh, scale and do whatever I want um, with it. So no, uh, I'm trying to just keep it to the same scale, the object itself, and then I can scale it, you know, as a whole piece. Um, I mean, ideally I would like use a horse here and then compare it to the horse, because it's a saddle for a horse, uh, to see how that would be, and then the horse would have to be in the same scale, but I'm not using like numbers for it. I'm just that. If I could work in a game and quit and sell the game. No, you're not allowed to do game projects. You're allowed to like do like this. This is not a game, it's an asset, it's a prop. So you're not allowed to work in a game and quit and sell games. Like, you know, um, yeah, you're not allowed to work in a game at all. Like, but you're allowed to do, you know, parts that goes into games. So this is going to be a game-ready model, but it's not going to be a game. I can't really make a game out of like one model e uh, either, so yeah. I think most companies have those type of um, agreements with uh, Yeah, I guess in general, just the um, employees, not just artists, like in general. Uh, I think we're ready to copy this this part over, but not the not the bottles actually. So I guess it would be this. Okay, so this is the flap. Let's the flap. Because we have this one that we need to make first. Because that's, that side is exposed. If we shake the Resting. I guess it's just like a metal piece to keep it relatively, you know, intact from damage because it's sliding in and out a lot. And actually, on one of the sides, it's sticking up a little bit. I guess that makes it a little bit more interesting. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm just gonna delete this because I do like to see that in the bake that it looks like it's you no know, dragged over. Otherwise, we will lose that detail in here. <coughs> Would you ever go into game modding? Me personally, no, but Aslan here is doing a lot of modding, uh, like Skyrim mods. So, your questions about mods, so you should probably uh, just ask Aslan in chat. Uh, Tinspin, I didn't play. No, I haven't played Half Life. Like, I don't have a VR headset at home. I only had one when I was working with uh, VR, like at work, back then, like the year I did. And yeah, no, I don't enjoy playing VR myself, so... Like I have tried a fair amount of VR games, but I don't really... Yeah, I don't really like it. It's... Um, it's different games, like, than you would see you know regularly when you're playing games right so it's like it plays a bit different because you can't play for long sessions so a lot of the games are like made to be quicker and played in faster sessions and so on uh but also like i don't know i like to sit still like a coach like be a coach potato sit in my sofa and hold a controller and just play um you know, games and relax and VR for me is like, you know, movements all over the place and uh, I know that there are VR games where you can just sit back and relax with a controller as well, but I don't really see the point uh, right now. Uh, it was interesting to work with it though, but I'm not really gonna... I'm not gonna play uh, this one. Denimir, you asked about if why I added extra loops for the cylindrical object. Mm. Trying to figure out what you're talking about now. Um, you perhaps mean this? The little thing? Why I added... Why I added loops? You mean here? It, or like why I started doing this because um, what I had before was like triangles going to one point in here which you get from a cylinder so when I was smoothing the object going like this uh, it was trying to like average out to get like you know add polygons to make it look more like smooth like this high poly uh, in this place where it connects a lot of points which like made it shade horribly wrong. Um, so it kind of broke here in the connection. So what I had to do was to remove those triangles and then like make them as like loops. And of course I don't have to add the loop the entire way, like still get the same uh, result by removing this. You see in the wireframe it looks a bit funky, but if you look like here, it still looks intact, so you don't have to add like a loop the entire way. But I did anyway, because it was like easy to connect, so why not? The 
inside the longer part of the cylinder. Uh, I think I showed this before then in there, but like last time. So I want to make this edge here smooth, right? Uh, so I add one of these loops here. Uh, because if I remove this one and then smooth it out, it's gonna look like this because it's gonna try to find the average between the end side and the loop all the way over here. So it's gonna like bend over basically. Uh, but if I add that on the end, it's gonna look for like between these two and smooth it out because like the closer this one is, the better like the average is going to be, but you can see as I move it, it's gonna like be like a longer and longer one. It's gonna be harder for it to actually get that sharper edge. So it's kind of like a support edge to have it a bit sharper. But as you can see now, um, it moves quite a lot anyway, because this edge and this edge is also trying to move closer to each other um, and try to find the average. But if I add a loop, here, it's gonna like average up in between these ones, and then you add another one, uh, and another one, and then that one is gonna move closer and closer to the to the edge. So, like, what it's looking for, it's gonna be, um, I guess, easier. So the more you add, but at some point, you're just gonna end up like, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. So you can start adding more and more. Uh, but there's like a tool in Maya, so when I add that, so I had it like this, and the reason why I added like five is because when I add one, you can go in here and press like multi, and then I usually just press like a higher number in case I would have to adjust it again, so it became a five, but I don't need that much. If you want to have this edge even harder than it is now, because as you said, uh, saw, it's not really getting harder, it's because this is like trying to average in here. Um, so what you can do then is to um, select all of these in Maya, like it's going to look different in other tools, and then just add a edge on the inside which will make this edge then uh, harder again. So if I would remove this, it will be smoother. So this is how you can control like how smooth edges get. Um, so it will be the same here if I remove this one. This one is gonna start like floating out here. And if that's what you're going for, then that's great. If that's not what you're going for, then you should start adding like support edges. Max or my office alternative for hobby artists. I think they do have, and I think they have as many other programs right now. Like, I have a Substance um, subscription, so then you pay, I think it's like a few euros a month to have it. Like, Photoshop is also having that, you know, like subscription based. But I think the Maya subscription base is horrible. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's too expensive still. Uh, some companies, they will offer like a home like license for you if you use, you know, because you have like a work license and you have a home license as well. Like, because so you usually when they buy a key, they have a, uh, like you get two seats from it and, you know, different license agreements. So sometimes you work, uh, when you work for a company, you can get like a home version, like a home I guess. But otherwise, that's why a lot of people use Blender, because it's free. Um, I don't even... You understand now. <laughs> you were having a really hard time understanding the av averaging thing. I only ever added supporting loops, but never add extra loops in between big open areas. Oh, okay. 
yeah, well, that makes sense. I didn't do that in the beginning either. I was just like adding it like uh, next to the thing I wanted to support, right? Oh, last time I did it on the box and it made more sense to me, but now it makes... Oh, ma okay, so this makes sense. Oh, you're welcome. If you have more questions about these things, just let me know. Try to explain them if I can. Oh, Nocturnal Block Art! Maya Light exists! Oh, that's cool! I, I didn't know that. That's, uh, that's very neat. Yeah, if you only want to have modeling and then missing animation tools and rendering, sounds good. I think ZBrush also have a light version. It's, it's great when they do things like that, like making it more affordable for people. Like Maya and 3ds Max also have like student licenses, so I think if you used like if you're a student you can get like a license for like three years or something as well. At least that's what it used to be. <laughs> Hello! Hello Shaq and Alba. Hello Ron! How are you doing? Nice of you to pop by. Adding an indie version for Max soon? Ah, that's cool. I think they, I think they're probably feeling the competition from the uh, Blender as well, because people are talking about it that like you know it's a, it's a great tool and it's adding a lot of different new things all the time. So if they want to keep uh, people using. Uh, Maya and Max, they're gonna have to do something about their licenses. Thank you for the follow, uh, not for a blocker. Ron, you're doing great. Ron is lately kicking you to finish your project and, somehow, and it somehow works. Oh, that's great. It's good that you are, I guess, sharing each other on or like, I don't know, keeping pe each other like accountable for your work. Are you working on art jam? Than we are two at least. I uh, I am doing good. Um, how are you like doing in isolation?
right, you have the plate here. The bottom is okay, maybe somewhere. Seems like I only made a plate on this side. Oh, then I'm gonna add it on this side instead. sort all of these things a little bit so I know what's what. Uh, okay, 
guess that's going to make those groups down as well. So that's like belt along. Nothing changed that much well. You see like you're on a summer break but it's no sun. It's snowing outside and you have to wear a flu mask when you walk your dog. Uh, yeah, well that's that's not really as normal I would say, but I guess you spend a lot of time inside then. Manageable you have but you have time to work on your projects. You forgot to have a VR headset? Oh, you played uh, Halo, um, not Halo, Half Life. Impressive uh, game, well, that's good. But it proved VR really has no future that way the tech works now. It's convoluted and well, did not break any barriers from the original Vive hardware. I think it's hard to say what the like AR and VR is going. In a way. But yeah, it hasn't really, you know, I guess exploded in a way like the mobile market did. I think that's what people were waiting for or like hoping that it would do. Like soon, that's why it's been a lot of investment in it. Max, because you asked later what to think of the 3ds Max. Um, so my first 3D modeling program was actually 3ds Max, and that's back in 2013, 2012, 2013. That's when I started with Max. Maya, uh, that's probably more. Like I did a little bit of Maya 2014, but not that much, and then I was dual wielding Max and Maya uh, in my first like company job. So I would still do a lot of things in Max, and then do the end export in Maya. So I guess I started being serious about using Maya only, maybe like 2016 or so. That's when I started using Maya instead of Max, and like you know, gave up on Max. Yeah, I think that's that's how it went. I'm wrong. You started sculpting uh, in ZBrush this morning. ZBrush class. Save is corrupt. I suck. <laughs> oh wow, how unlucky you are. What did you do? It was probably your fault more than ZBrush fault though. At least in my in my uh, point of view, when it's Blender, it's always Blender's fault. Across. I hate ZBrush. <laughs> oh, I love ZBrush. That's my favorite um, favorite software, actually. Um, yeah, Maya is pretty much standard for most game companies. Uh, like some companies use Modo, but we use we use Maya. And ZBrush, I sculpt in it. Um, so all my other like projects that I've been streaming has been mainly like ZBrush. ZBrush sculpting. Uh, I think this is actually... Isn't this like the first time I'm actually doing something... Like I'm spending time modeling in a software that is not ZBrush? 
like on stream at least? I think so at least. I'm not sure if the people here can probably refresh my memory. rotated exactly the same as the block out I made. somewhere. I think the last part now that I'm going to do is this flap here. So I already have one save out for this. Your free code is your favorite. Much easier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've seen 3D code being used a lot for like hand painted textures. It looks uh, really, really nice. At least back a couple of years ago when people were doing uh, like World of Warcraft inspir inspired texturing. It looks very, very neat. I never tried it though. You have a seabrush question. Is there any clever way to project an alpha and so the nuclear model without it getting stretched? Because it's starting to drive you nuts. <laughs> um, are you using like a drag brush for that? You're striking out a brush? It sounds to me that you're having like maybe too few like segments for the high poly maybe. Or you can show me off to the stream in our talks. Multiplayer shit takes so much time and work, Aslan. <laughs> okay, <laughs> multiplayer shit. It's almost like you don't enjoy doing multiplayer. Uh, Grusty, hello, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I think, uh, in general, it's okay sitting in indoors. It's been like three weeks of sit uh, sitting in my apartment, but uh, it's uh, it's good. It's okay. I'm going a little bit nuts talking to myself and the cat, but that's uh, that's life. Uh, there was a question in here, Mom. The socking, how did you get started? Where did you get hired? Did you make some work for our station and fly with them? Or were you headhunted through your stream? Also sorry for all the questions, look like you're doing something. Doing some really cool work. Oh, well thank you. And uh, no worries about all the questions. Um, hmm, how, uh, how I started? 
Well, that's. Uh, I started by going uh, to university. That's. Uh, that's the way. Uh, like a game design education mostly it was, and then. Uh, like from there, I took a vocational education in 3D uh, at Future Games, like a year of just doing 3D art. I didn't apply with ArtStation because it wasn't a thing when I applied. Like, ArtStation didn't exist. <gasps> oh my god, people are like, what? You want an ArtStation? <gasps> no, I had my own uh, website actually. So I made like just a simple one and then I applied, like uploading you know, all my um, portfolio stuff there. And I applied with that portfolio and uh, cover letter. And uh, my first like company hire was Guerrilla Games in Holland. Um, before that, I did some freelance stuff uh, for the Solus project, which is also in uh, VR, uh, but it wasn't in, in the beginning. So, uh, and then I've been going from there, I guess. I have an art station account because it's like, you know nice to dump pictures in there but everything I put on ArtStation doesn't go into my portfolio like there's a lot of other things that goes into the portfolio instead I would say so my ArtStation is more since I still have my portfolio website my ArtStation is more a way for me to use post art I guess because it feels like Instagram but for 3D art in a sense so um, uh, ArtStation is great, I think, for doing portfolio because it's simple. It's just not what I'm using it for since I already had one previously. So. Avrax! Give some feedback on your weapon. Uh, you're aiming for something like this. Oh, okay. That's a lot of duct tape and rubber bands going on on that gun. Okay. Oh. See if we can figure this out. I have to take up the manage manage thing. Mm, are the gun you wanna have the um, feedback on in Discord then? Because I didn't get a link for that. Back channel. There we go. I will take a look. Oh, it's this one then, right, Avarax? And you were aiming for this. Are you planning on adding like uh, the f like duct tapes and rubber bands and all of these things, or you want to keep it clean? You want to do something dirty, basically. You have a silencer and sight to post it. Okay. Um. So you need some uh, help with the uh, texturing. Okay, so this is a... Five, seven. Like what I usually do is like, okay, you wanna aim for that thing you showed in... to show on our station but it's always good to look at how it looks like you know in, for real and follow that as a reference rather than looking at someone else like gone on art station 
of the material. Because if I'm not mistaken, a lot of these guns look very plasticky rather than... Uh... Okay, so... I'm moving a lot of windows here. So, like, I would always try to go for a clean base as you have, but try to get that as close as possible, I would say. So this looks like plastic for me. Polymer, yeah, polymer is like a mixed material, so it's like... You will all, you have all of these, like, uh, you know, slots, uh, like Marmosets have a few, with, where you can like color pick uh, different values and things. Um, but it's always gonna be hard because it's like not it's more it's like we call it gun metal or gun material when we talk about guns at work. Uh, and it doesn't really look like you know pure. It's not pure metal in any form. So then you will have to uh, try to mimic that as you know as good as you can. And for me, I would always look at the sheen of things. So look at different lighting. So you can see here, um, like how the highlight looks. It's quite soft. Um, so that indicates for me that like you have to uh, get a lower gloss on it, like but whatever maps you're using. Um, and looking at yours right now... It looks very, like... It looks dull as like a uh, plastic material should be. Um, but then again you can also see how it's sometimes like the highlights get very stark. A lot of the material also come from the noise in the in the plastic, so no material is ever actually flat. So if you actually zoom in on plastic, even that one would actually have small like granular noise in the normal, which also helps with the, the light. So when you're thinking about material definition per se, like a lot of the work goes into the normal and the, the roughness or like smoothness map or whatever you're using. Um, and get those to play together. And the base color is basically just the color that you slap on. Um, so working with just like getting that right, sometimes it can be almost easier to not use like colors if you want to get the right scheme of it. And just you know play around with light and have gray material and see if you can get the plastic feel going with like micro noise in the in normal together with micro noise also in the roughness. Um, I think the person here has played around a lot with that micro noise, you know, that no surface really is like flat. But then again, like, if you look at it really, um, the difference between this material and uh, the wood part here is quite minimal and when it comes to like the sheen and gloss of it it's more like the normal details that would tell me that this is like wood because you have all of these like uh, it behaves more like wood in the normal with the grains you posted more pictures you said yeah here we go you have the noise in there I wonder if the noise is maybe too harsh. It almost starts to look like concrete. It should be more softer. Like you have a lot here, but it's softer and smaller here. I think that's what you should aim for, but also even make it more subtle than you have here. It's basically just breaking the light. What you see here is also maybe a bit on the harsh side, if you would actually go for polymer. Thank you. 
But yeah, like, try to think it, think about it like a build-up and then you start slowly adding uh, the details. I think you have done that in a way, but also you can see that I think this is supposed to be like a fingerprint or bigger damage, but it feels like you started adding details like grime and dirt before you got the base material correct. So I would just remove those layers and start like with getting the, f the basic feel right. This glass wall? Hmm. Yeah, to me it looks like wood. So this is the thing, if you look at other people's stuff on ArtStation, I mean it's a really cool gun. But if you do try to mimic what they have done, there's a risk that you're mimicking something that maybe they didn't 100% capture as well. So trying to find all the materials in their purest form and then do like a build up from there. It's great to have inspiration. What I would take as inspiration here is more like, um, like how dirty the cloth is. But then again, if it's this dirty, I would expect it to be more dirty in between here as well. It's only kind of the cloth that is this like smeared. Um, so I would take note on that and try to make that on my gun instead. Like, add more, as probably because you've been gripping it. Um, and then I would, t I would honestly take inspiration from the light, because it's quite nice na natural light, but when it comes to material, I would actually use something else as a reference. There's a lot of noise going on in here as well. It's like the whole thing has been damaged. So what would happen usually is, you know, it would where it's been used, or like if you drop it, that's where you want to see the noise. So it's a lot of noise going on here. I would, I would actually like to see it's being more, you know, contrast in between uh, a lot of noise and like empty areas, so try to work with that Avarax, like have a breather in between, you know, so try to get aim for a like subtle um, bumpiness and then you can play with certain areas where I can see you have some scratches here, but this is overtaking the, um, the picture or like the material. And also think about where you're adding the um, small little, I guess, dimples and stuff. Like, does it make sense that it's actually here? Um, or here, for that matter? Like, try to tell a story with the, um, the things you're texturing. Uh, so that's why, I, um, I, again, I'm repeating myself, but if you get the base material correct, then you can start telling a story where you want to have the damage and like uh, edge wear and stuff and it could be okay so I've been the person I've been holding it like this it's probably dropped on one side or maybe when they fell it's like you know been scratched have you know the the person being running on gravel then you will see a different type of damage have the person used been indoor or like have been used as a practice gun you know all of these things um, help when I'm trying to tell a story, otherwise if you don't really try to figure out those things it tends to become very messy and all over the place because you don't really have a direction for yourself. But that's uh, that's uh, yeah, sorry for the ramble. I hope uh, I hope it helps a little bit, Avarax. Oh, I'm starting to lose my voice. I'm gonna connect this part and then uh, I'm gonna call it a day actually, otherwise I won't have time for uh, art talks at all. That would be sad, right?
because if I connect all of these things and it looks okay and it works, then that's basically it for Maya. Then we only have the like details left to do in the ZBrush. It's a long time since I worked this way around doing uh, like a whole high poly base model in Maya. It's been actually quite a nice change instead of like doing everything in ZBrush as I'm trying to challenge myself to do that. Actually done. The now people are probably wondering like, but the what about the like vials? And I'm like, yeah, the vials. I'm going to do that as a separate model actually. So I will do the bag first because I want to do some variation, and that could be like a separate asset instead of like this bag so then we can have some fun with the vials later um, making different shapes and stuff or filling it with other things actually we can have some like herbs sticking out to make it more interesting and add some like color contrast in there maybe the guy didn't always have like bottles or the woman or whatever person had the bag with stuff so, um, yeah, that's it guys for today. I'm quite happy when I'm done with the, this part. Um, I'm gonna move to my end, free end screen. So, uh, after the stream now, then as we started doing I think twice now, uh, since I'm streaming earlier between 8 and 10 my time, we're doing a art talk in Discord. Uh, that basically means we're just chatting and working everyone in the chat and if you don't want to work you can join and just listen in and play games or something else. Everyone is welcome. Um, thanks everyone for popping by today and the new followers and keeping me as company when I'm working on things like this. It always makes it more fun. I hope everyone stays safe and I will see you in the art talks uh, and if not I will see you next stream. So take care everyone and have a good uh, good week. What the t-shirt says? Oh, it's one of my motivational t-shirts. I will end with the t-shirt then. It's a panda t-shirt. It's basically a panda. Who, uh, or like a white bear transforming itself to a panda by painting, I guess. <laughs> it's cute. Well, take care guys. Talk to you later. Bye bye.